Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to set up an Intel NUC for your smart home. Now, this video is meant for the first time Intel NUC user. So let's go over the different pieces and parts that we're going to be using. Now, I went for, as they say on some of the other videos, the cheapest NUC I could find. This is a NUC Celeron. Now, it should be just fine for Linux. Eh, we'll see how it does for Windows. That's, that's the unknown. Now, for RAM, I went with just a 4 gig stick. You can put more in. Most of the NUCs that I've run, well, all the NUCs I've run across will handle two strips. So I'm going to start with just four because for Linux, that should be fine. And supposedly, Windows will run. And we say supposedly. Now, you have the option for hard drives to either use a hard drive like I've got here, which is a kind of a notebook. It's a two and a half inch drive or you can use an SSD. Well, I'm going to be chewing up a lot of space and it was easier to get this for less than $30 to get a similar amount would have been almost a hundred. And I thought about getting a, a 500 or even a terabyte, but it was just a matter of what I could get on short notice because some of the things were just going to be easier to, to get than others. Now, this content is available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on that subscribe button nail and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now, we've already gone over the required items to that you're going to have to have so again just to review quickly i'm going to go with an intel 6 celeron or i'm sorry a nuc 6 generation celeron which was about 120 130 dollars and i'm going to go with a 4 gig strip in there which should be fine and then i went for a 320 gig hard drive because that way I'm going to have plenty of room. I'm looking to do some other Docker related videos and I potentially could chew up a lot of drive space. And I just, it was cheaper than getting an SSD. So let's switch over here to the overhead cam and I've got everything all laid out here. And if you don't already have one of these iFixit toolkits, now this is the, the bigger one and the name escapes me right offhand. Maybe it's on here. No, they didn't put the name on here. That would have been easy. So let's go ahead and we will get all these screws out here. And the easiest way I found is just to keep going counterclockwise until you feel the screw start to kind of click a little bit. And that's when it's bumping against the threads on the top. So a click or two and that should get you right where you need to be and almost there okay now note here where it says the arrow that points toward the front that's this that's going to be an important thing to remember once you get started now we'll just carefully bring that top out of the way and we will lift this out and i don't want to get too much twisted because what we'll first do is put in the memory strip that's in here. If I can get this open, this see uh, the child-proof packaging sometimes can be a little bit of a challenge. Now, this is a keyed memory connector, so it's only going to go in, in one way. So we'll go into the lower bay first, push that in, and then push it down. You'll hear it click, or feel it click. Now, the next thing we will do here is we'll slide the hard drive in, make sure it doesn't bind on the cables, and push it in firmly. Now, you'll notice there are some screw holes there, and that would be a good idea long term to go ahead and mount it in. But right now, we're just getting into doing some testing, so I'm not going to screw that in at this point, but for long term, definitely you want to do that. Now we'll go back over here and remember where it had the front, front. Okay, so, and we'll put this down and th this we do have to screw back in. 
Otherwise, it's not going to write on the case. Not because the case is not going to sit real well. And I, I just barely, I do what's called probably a finger tighten. Because I don't want to get it in so tight because heaven forbid, maybe you have a screw strip on you and then you're really in a world of hurt. So we'll lay that back out of the way. And I'm going to move over the keyboard and mouse. We'll need to have that here at some point. Actually here fairly quick. And I'll move over the HDMI. And I'm not going to worry about network at this point. And when you get the power supply out of the box, it's not going to have the plug in on it. So you just want to put the plug in for that works for the country that you're in. And we will do that. And let me get the keyboard up here so that I can have it ready when we're to that point. And now we will switch over to, okay, now we should be going into setup. There we go. Now, on an Intel NUC, let me turn off my ugly mug here for a moment. We'll want to go in and we'll go to boot. And, okay, we don't have that set up yet. All right, so now, well, we will go over here and get to our handy 2541. And we'll get the cable plugged in on it. Okay, there we go. Had it wrong side up. And on this Intel NUC, you'll want to use the blue USB port because that's the USB 3 port. And now if we go back over here, we should have, okay, we're going to have to reboot it with the USB drive attached because at that point it wasn't seeing anything. So now let's go here. Well, I didn't hit it quick enough, did I? When they mean hit F2, they mean hit F2 now. Okay, come on. Set up. And a good sign, so as soon as you hit F2, then it immediately will go around <coughs> and go into uh, to setup. So we'll go here, advanced, boot. Oh, boot configuration. Okay, let's go legacy boot. All right, boot configuration. Okay. Oh, they've changed the firmware a little bit. That's what was kind of, uh, and I haven't even checked for the latest one. So boot USB devices first. Okay. That's a good sign. We want to do that. And we don't really want it to boot off network. We don't really care if it's, well, we're going to go Linux at this point. Okay. So fast boot, boot USB, and we've selected that in place. So we will click F10. Press any key. Okay. It just obviously had its uh, fingers crossed. So now we will do install. Uh, we'll go American English. It should Okay, there we go. Now it's loading its additional components. And just to switch over here quickly, then you can see it's actually getting it off the drive at this point. And that installed rather swiftly. So that was a little more than, than what I was expecting it to, which is a good thing. Tell it, no, this is an error I've run into before where it's missing some modules that it thinks it need to have. Okay, there we go. It's one of these pregnant pause situations just when you think it's going to do something and, and then it doesn't. Okay, there we go. Loading additional components in this day of instant gratification and we all want things now. Okay, so we're going to tell it to use the entire disk. And again, make sure you select the right thing because this is the 320. That's what we're going to use. And the 500 one, you need to be careful because, of course, it's advertising itself out as IODD. So that's good. 
So we will hit enter there and all files in one partition. Now, as you get more uh, experienced with Linux, then there's several schools of thought about having the different uh, files in different partitions, but where that's way beyond what we're doing at. So at this point, we want to tell it to write changes to disk. And this just, as you know, as you saw me put the drive in, it had never been used before. So I'm not going to be surprised if this takes a little bit longer. And there are a host of different NUCs available. You've seen the other ones that, well, you may or may not have seen them. Because sometimes I almost bring them into the picture. But I've got an i3, an i5, and then I've got the Celeron. And as you get up into the, well, now they're into the 10th generation NUX, they can get a little uh, pricey. Over $1,000 is not unheard of. So it's just a matter of what you want to do. I mean, for a smart home, I'm trying to run bare minimum. So I thought, okay, let's go with the Celeron. Let's see what the different options are in terms of, I know what an i3 versus i5 will do. And at this point, the i3 is... I mean, sorry, the Celeron is performing faster than I thought it might. Uh, my expectations were were not high, but it is humming right along. So this, as you can see, is, I mean, I used the 2541. It obviously found what it needed. It, it didn't have any problems with the memory. And that's where when you go into the BIOS utility, I thought I had a troubleshooting I saw already out there and for some reason it didn't come up on it. I'm going to have to look at that one because it did come up before in the list but I have been making some additions so it's, chances are I could have overwritten something. And it's an, always a good reason to have backups of whatever you're working with if you've got the IODD and I always try to have my ISOs in a separate place so that, that way I can pull things back. But as you can see I mean this is humming right along. It's really very straightforward you saw what it took to put things in place and as a once once you're sure everything's okay then i probably would pop the lid and put the screws back in so put the screws in to the hard drive to firmly mount it it do you have to no i mean for most people it's probably going to be all right leave it that way but it doesn't hurt just to uh, to to secure it a little bit just to avoid problems because early on with some of the uh, the first iteration drives, they were this before IDE. It was like MFM, if I remember correctly. The they were very touchy that if you were going to screw the drive in or mount it somewhere, you need to do that before you ever formatted the drive. And if not, then you might have a problem. So it was, and then you hear stories of well, the drive if you set it up to be laying on its side or, or vertically, then you always had to operate it that way. I don't know if that's so much the case anymore. But that's, uh, you know, that's what how much things have progressed. You saw what it takes. So the Intel NUC is very is a very straightforward box. It is, as you saw, very easy to put together. You pulled out four screws, carefully lifted out the tray for the hard drive, put the memory in, just ever so carefully, just kind of push it to make sure it firmly seats in that connector, and then push it down then put the hard drive into the tray and then put it back down into there and then put the bottom on and then you should be going. Let's take a look here where we stand on getting that. So it's it's copying the things out there. So it's it's humming right along. So really there's no need to to hold you up at at this point. So and if it wasn't working then we would have had a an indication that either the install would have aborted or thrown some sort of error there are bios updates that you probably should look at now this literally just got into my hands in the past hour so i didn't even take the time to go ahead and put the bios updates on there if you're going to be running Linux, you may have to jump through a few hoops, and that's something I'm going to look at because most of the ones, NUX I have, except one so far, are all going to be on Linux. So I've got to look at handling those a little bit differently. But again, we'll go into that in another video. So, But you can see it's just, it's humming right along. So it's really, you, you can't make it much easier than that. We've still got to do some things in terms of 
getting the network card, the wireless card up and running versus the, the hardwired one. And I always bring up a hardwired first. That's the easiest way to go. And then if it's Linux, then you can quickly shift over to that. And so far, I'm running all my NUCs wirelessly. I've not really had a problem, and that's probably in part to the uh, Ubiquity uh, access point that I've got it up and running. So anyway, that's where we stand. You can see it's still... I was hoping it might get finished. It's about to finish here, but again, we're going to try to give you some time back in your day. You see what's involved to get this up and running. It's very straightforward. So if you're not used to getting a computer opened up, really the Intel NUC is a good one to start with. It's good for use on a smart home because you've got you can put a, some quite a bit of memory into it and just about any size hard drive you want. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are either the next steps to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on that subscribe button now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.